Time Warner cable, all right, for your internet connection, all right? Time Warner has a certain block of IP addresses that are their IP addresses, all right? IP addresses have to be unique. Can't have two of them, otherwise someone could get someone else's Google results, all right? So, IPs are registered to particular organizations, to particular internet service providers. And therefore, if you know the IP address, you have a pretty good chance of being able to figure out who owns that IP address, who that IP address is associated with, and therefore the location of this. Now, this is also not going to be real pre uh, um, precise, right? A student in my uh, day class of web development talked about, for example, he lives in Illyria and a lot of times he'll be identified because of the web uh, internet service provider he goes to as being from Ravenna, right? So it's in the same ballpark, right? But it's not very precise, all right? Um, because again, irregularities happen, all right? Irregularities happen. Uh, when I used to be on Century uh, Internet, uh, the, the, through the phone company here, local phone company in the Lorraine area. Occasionally, it would think I was in Louisiana. All right? Why did it think I was in Louisiana? Well, guess what? Century Telephone, their headquarters is in Louisiana or something like that. All right? So, in other words, maybe there were blocks of IP addresses that were originally set up for Louisiana that, hey, because they needed them up here, they assigned them to the Ohio Century Telephone or, or something along those lines, all right? So it's not very precise and it's not necessarily accurate, all right? But for the most part, this works fairly well. Not to say there aren't irregularities. On still another occasion, I had an issue where I was redirected to, uh, I think, Google Germany because it, it saw my IP address and thought that it was associated with Germany. And again, I, I'm clearly not in Germany, but again, there was some hiccup in that IP uh, address. That's why this is not going to be as precise as the client side is going to be, all right? Uh, at least not the client side on a mobile, right? Because the mobile knows for sure where you are because there's a little GPS thingy in it. All right? And that's not lying. All right? that, that's not going to put you in the wrong place. At the very worst, it will you know, it'll pinpoint you within a small area or even a little bit bigger area. You know, for example, I've seen on my GPS when I first started it, it might not know exactly what street I'm on, but it still has me in the right city. Right? It, you know, even at its worst, it comes with a more precise uh, uh, location than, than, than this does. All right, so this is sort of does sort of a reverse thing, looks at your IP address and figures out where you're, where you're at from there. All right, now, this is not precise, but two good things about this. And I hesitate to say this because I don't want to make this sound... Um, like we're being sneaky here, all right? You don't have to depend on browser permission to do this. All right? Remember, when you're using method A of through the browser, first thing it does when you execute that geolocation, it asks you, hey, can you share my location? Server isn't going to ask you that. Server knows, based on your IP address, to as great a degree as possible where you're located. Doesn't have to ask permission for that. Browser has no say in the issue. The other advantage of this is that you're not constrained by the specific browser. Or let me, let me rephrase that. For the most part, it eliminates browser compatibility issues. All right. If the code is running on the server, it doesn't matter what browser requested it. The server can run that code and can give you an answer. 
In method A, it depends on the browser because the browser is the one running the code. So if the browser can't support it, you're out of luck. But in method B, it's the web server. So therefore, only the web server needs to be set up to do geolocation. doesn't matter what kind of browser you have on that end. That's why if we go to Google, even on IE, all right, eight and earlier, Google will be contact sensitive. And if I Google Italian restaurants, it'll give me those in the Illyria area. Why? Because I'm not doing this kind of location. I'm doing this kind of location, all right? Server has to have the IP address, so it can use that IP address to figure out where I am. And again, might not be quite as precise, but doesn't ask my permission for it, and no issue with browser compatibility. So that's the two alternatives for this. This, depending on the device, has a potential to give you a more precise location. All right? Um, but it asks you permission for it. person could always answer no. And secondly, if you don't have the right browser, it's not going to work. So, if you're talking about which one of these do you use, well, you consider the, the pluses and minuses, right? For example, um, if I was doing something where my website, let's say, let's say I had a hotel website and, you know, for, for a place. And my hotel website wanted to tell you restaurants that are in the area. All right? So I'm, I, I'm in a big city. I'm in, you know, I'm in Chicago. And my Chicago hotel has geolocation to tell you, hey, here's the places to eat that are close to the hotel. For that, I might want to use the client side because Chicago's a big place, right? If you're not identified precisely where you are, you could have restaurants all over the place recommended. But with the precise location that a GPS can give, we can give more precise results back. So, you know, like if you're traveling for business, sometimes, like when I travel for business, sometimes I would rent a car, sometimes I wouldn't. I'd just, you know, take a cab to the hotel or whatever. Well, I didn't want to eat too far away from the hotel. So knowing what's close to the hotel was really a good thing. And if we didn't use that kind of geolocation, if instead we used the server-based stuff, someone would tell me, hey, it's way on the south side of Chicago, this restaurant or whatever. This can more precisely target it. Now, if you're thinking something like the weather, for example, well, I know there's crazy weather right, that, that happens all the time. You know, there's, there's cases where it'll be raining here and it won't be raining at my home in Amherst, right? But in general, you know, it doesn't need to know I'm at Lorraine Community College to tell me the weather, right? If I'm in Elyria, that's probably close enough if it tells me the weather for Elyria. And this would have the advantage of, yeah, it's not as precise, but it doesn't need to be as precise. And I can do it without browser uh, permission, and it is cross-browser compatible. So I don't need to worry about those sorts of issues. All right. So again, two tools in the toolbox. The client-based geolocation and the server-based geolocation. It's your job to look at a problem and figure out which is the better to use it for. So let's go and let's look at some example of some server-side geolocation. All right. One of the questions that was raised was something about customizing a page based on uh, the city that you are at. All right. And you could do that client side or server side. I think for our example, we're going to go over some server side code for that.
city name. Okay, this is actually a client side example to determine a city name. So, let's go and look at this example. There's a demo. All right. Let's go and look at this. And let's save this as geolocation.html. And let's look at it. Let's go and run it. This is all client side. All right. All right. Let's look at the code that created it. Interesting enough, though, is that this didn't give us a browser compatibility issue. All right. Ooh, mysterious. And you right. said this is which one? This is an example of client side, but it, yet it did not give us a, um, a, uh, uh, it didn't ask us for permission and it ran even under IE. Let's see how that can be. Let's open this up with Notepad. What if you did client side on a desktop versus server side, which one would be more precise then? That is a good question. My guess is that they would be about as precise as each other because I believe the only way that um, a desktop is going to know where it is is based on the IP. Probably an easier thing for me to do would have been just to copy and paste that. you'll notice on this page is it talks about API keys. Sometimes um, services like this will demand that you register and get a unique API key so that it, it sort of keeps track on who's using their service for what. Google has recently dropped that requirement so you don't really need an API key anymore for Google services. Okay, let's look at this code now. All right. First of all, we're importing a piece of JavaScript, all right, using the JavaScript Google API, and we're passing it a key of your key. Again, this reflects back when you were required to have an API key to use Google stuff. We can just as well remove that, all right. Once we have that script loaded, we can say, we could go and test the location and pull the latitude, the longitude, the city, and the state from that. All right, city, country, and so on. So, what could we do? 
we could do something like this. All right. Right now, all this is doing is this is outputting some text. All right. Let's say I'm going to go and I'm actually going to add an HTML file around this script. Now the one thing that they said, uh, or, or that, that um, you said last week, um, was about possibly showing a different picture defend, depending on where the location was. I think you need the, the slash on that head. Yes, we do. All right. Let's go and let's put some code in that will give us a different image um, depending on what city we're in. So, let's go and let's do this. What is Sheffield Lakes High School? That's Brookside, right? Uh, yeah, they got like Cardinals. Right? Brookside Cardinals, okay. Uh, let's see, maybe they have a little logo. I think I spelled Brookside wrong. All right, Brookside High School. save the bowling cardinal. <laughs> and I'll put it on the desktop. Oh, it's a BMP image. Ugh. Let's save it as a JPEG. There's a cardinal, cardinal.jpg. All right. So let's go in here and let's make an image. And I'm going to go and I'm going to Google bowling clip art. So we'll take her. Alright. And it's a PNG file. So I'll save it on the des desktop. Now, I'm going to go and I'm going to put an image on there and I'm going to put the image of her bowling. The image SR. C equals bowl dot png all equals bowling. All right, let's make sure this works. Right now, I'm not doing anything funny with uh, with that. I'm just displaying the just displaying the, uh, the 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 image. And there we go. All right. Now let's go and let's make the cardinal big. Let's open it with our cutting edge. Let's 
Let's make him 300% bigger. All right, there we go. Pixelated cardinal. All right, so now, what do I want to do here? All right, let's go and we save this. If we, we open up this geolocation in Firefox, we get that. It knows that we're in Sheffield Lake. All right. Let's put code in there to change the image if the city equals Sheffield Lake. All right. I'm going to put a couple break tags so the image is down below. Now, normally, you probably would get rid of that text that simply tells you where you are. We'll do that when we're all done because I want to see it as I'm debugging. All right. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say if city equals, there's two equal signs there. When in JavaScript you use two equal signs to designate a comparison, Sheffield Lake. Then, what do we want to do? All right. What we want to do is we want to find this image and change the source of it. Right? So I'm going to give it an ID. Remember, for any client-side code, for any client-side JavaScript, you need, first of all, to point to the thing on the page that you want to change. Right? Because there could be a dozen different images on this page. We don't want to change this one or that one. We want to change the bowler. All right. So we give it an ID. Now we can point to that image. Now that we can point to that image, we can set any of the properties of it. So for example, we can set the SRC property of it. We could actually set the alt attribute of it if we wanted to. Now how do we set that? Well, we use our dot notation. And we say document dot what do I want to find on the page? I want to find a thing that has that ID. So I will say get element by ID. by ID, exactly. Which ID do I want? I want the bowler. What about that bowler am I interested in? Well, I'm interested in setting the source of it. Right? The bowler is an image. Images have source attributes. I want, to set, I want to set the source of it to card.jpg. All right. Now let me look at this for a second, see if I've typoed anything. And then let's go in and see. way to fix this. The reason that I got that error 
is because this code is executing before that image is placed on the page. So it's a timing issue. If I just go and put this at the very bottom of my page, it'll work. Even after the HTML? Yeah, that's, I'm going to just demonstrate this and I'll show you how to really fix it. some of the code out but forgot to paste it. And there we go. We have the cardinal. Okay. So, that's not good to have that script hanging at the bottom. Like that. Alright. But, again, what happened when I had it at the top was that script tried to change the image, but that image hadn't been put on the page yet. So it didn't know what the bowler was because at that point there was nothing that had an idea of bowler. So if I put it down below, it works like a charm, sort of. All right. Here's a real way to fix that. I'm going to put this back up in the head because that's where it belongs. And I'm going to put on the body on load equals. And what that will do is after the page is loaded, it will go and it will call that script. That way I don't have to worry about the fact that, hey, that script, um, you know, that script's trying to execute before that image had loaded. So that's, to, to answer your question, that's the real way to handle it, is to use the on load event. Now when we go and do this, again, um, we should be back to normal. And there we are. Now, how do we test that this works, though? Right? Because my machine's in Sheffield Lake, right? How do I test that they get the image somewhere else? Quick yeah. on the I-90. Yeah, right. Well... <laughs> If you have a mobile device, you could test it on your mobile device and, and move it around. That would be good. One thing that you can do, though, is you can sort of fake it in testing. Um, and you can fake it this way. I could go in and insert a line of code in here temporarily that says,